Hello, welcome back to Next Level Adventures and welcome to Nong Kai here in the Isan area of Thailand. We are continuing our adventures in Isan and following the Mia Kong. Across there is Laos, but over here is Isan, Thailand, full of spicy food, incredible, beautiful temples, including a very unique one. You don't want to miss this one. We are going to a sunken temple out in the Mia Kong itself. Very interesting. This whole province is beautiful. We're going to have a great day today. So strap in as we explore more of Isan, the wild, the true, the real Thailand. And we're going to get to know this guy as well. <laughs> so come on, Dreamy. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so this is the first place we've stopped off in Nongkai. It's about 15 minutes outside of the main town and uh, it's quite lovely. It's beautiful sculptures and concrete statues depicting religious, Buddhist, even Hindu stories and folk tales. And they're all handmade and there are hundreds and hundreds of them. I've been walking around now for 20, 30 minutes and everywhere you turn there's a story being told from ones I understand and recognize certain parts and periods of Buddha's life and then it moves on to I've ever seen the king of Thailand depicted here and certain things that he did um, during his life I'm talking about Rama 9 and but then there's like there's a bit of a day of the dead vibe going on in this particular area I came through a tunnel a mouth kind of thing and there's this Buddha's image here holding people in his hand and all around there's imagery of family life some of the cute old couples who seem to have lived their life together all the way up until their death and then there's domestic violence um, someone's getting a slap some woman's maybe she's been caught cheating cheating on her husband or I don't know there's no English translations to the signs that go with it you just kind of have to use your imagination and again wild depictions of other people's imaginations to tell these stories through sculpture through art and uh, it's, it's fascinating and the more you go around this place the more you just you get blown away by some of the scale of these the centerpiece of the whole place is the seven serpent rising up it looks about 30 meters high and there's a, there's a image of the Buddha in the top of it and it's, it's massive and you know, I walked around to the back where there's a forest and even in the forest, towering over the huge trees are, again, huge statues of Buddha. And you know, you walk around a corner and you just go, wow, and you walk around another corner and you go, wow. You know? <laughs> it's one of those places where if you came here and wanted to take some nice Instagrams and photographs, there's a few people knocking around, but it's not very busy. 40 bar entrance. You could spend a good hour here and just soak up the atmosphere. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And there's a big lake over here with big looking fish and you can buy some bread. So let's go feed them. Those fish are massive. You can buy a whole loaf of bread for 20 baht. It's got me hungry. I've got a snack, and this is a strange snack in Thailand. Now, they have mango here, some of the best mango in the world, and they sell it in all different types of ripidity. 
<laughs> That's definitely not a word. You know, sometimes it can be green and crunchy, fresh off the branches, and other times it's soft and yellow. But they sell it with two types of dip. The first one I'm gonna try, because I've never tried this, I've always gone, oh, yeah, but never tried it. But since we're in Isan and everything is spicier than normal, why not, let's just try it. So it's sugar, looks like white sugar, and it's cut with chili flakes and chili seeds. Yeah, let's just, let's give it a try. Whoa, okay. Mm. I think there might be tamarind in there as well, but um, get the hit of the sweetness straight away, but then that is quickly removed by spice. <laughs> I would love to have found that when I was a kid. Play pranks on your mum and dad with the dib dab. Like, dad, try the new flavor of dib dab. And it would just be crazy spicy. No, it's quite interesting. But secondly, and more worryingly, <laughs> there seems to be this quite strong, crazy looking chili dip. Now I would imagine it's a sweet chili jam or something. I hope it's sweet, but it looks menacing. It's quite a lot, isn't it? Um, smells, smells all right. Here we go. Isan, what are you doing to me? There's just no need for that as a dip. Hey, delicious, delicious, fresh mango. And you want to dip it in that? I'll just stick to the normal <laughs> fresh raw mango, thank you. But we tried it and we didn't like it. The sugar thing was okay, but um, stay away from that chili dip. <laughs> oh, I have to say, this is a big statement, but if you look at what you get for your entrance fee, you know, it's 20 baht for Thai, 40 for foreigners. But I've been here an hour and a half. <laughs> hour and a half of looking around. And, you know, if, th if there was a nice park that had just one or two of these, it would be worth it because they really are so big and so impressive. And it's not until you get closer up to you see the crazy amount of detail that there is in every single one of these. But, yeah, there isn't two. There's probably 50. <laughs> and each one is beautiful and unique in their own way. And they're dotted around with the lovely gardens and trees and plants. And it's incredible. So if you're in Nong Khai, 100% come here. Um, I don't know where we should go next, but um, that mango is not going to cut it. So let's see if we can get some lunch somewhere. Oh, one of you guys has recommended me a place, actually, not far from the river. Let's go and check that out. Okay, good news and bad news. Bad news is the restaurant isn't open until five o'clock. But that's okay, because I've had that mango, so I can wait. But the, uh, the good news is, uh, just down the road from where the, the restaurant is, is the beautiful little area and a very unique, interesting thing happening, which we're gonna go check out. So firstly, there's this beautiful white and gold stupa here, temple, right on the banks of the Mekong. And as you can see behind me, there's people lying incense and things and it's very very beautiful however more interestingly there is a shrine or temple in the Mia Kong under the Mia Kong and to get out there there are tour boats taking Thai people over and out into the middle of the Mia Kong seemingly only the Thai side and people are doing something I can't quite make it out they're they're throwing yellow ribbons over it or something I'm not sure let's go on a boat let's get a little bit closer now there are people getting on the boats with big buckets of fish and turtles and eels and snails it seems like you buy them from the ladies at the pier and part of the pilgrimage to the shrine in the Mekong is to set free the fish now I did recently set free to two little baby turtles in uh, where was it Pitchit province <sighs> I just thought you know what Sparky's dead so let's, uh, let's put some life into the world. If you remember, a water lizard monster ate Sparky, my little drone. 
So I decided to set free some turtles to counteract the death. <laughs> but you guys gave me some crap in the comments and I think some of you had a good point that, you know, it's not really the most um, animal friendly of activities to promote. But, you know, it is part of Buddhism and culture. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. I actually think it's okay because every time you buy a turtle and you set it free, it's going to live and go downstream and maybe get eaten by a fish, but definitely have a better life than in a bucket. But for this time round, we're not going to buy the fish, okay? We're not going to support that this time. Um, we've done that before. Uh, but yeah, that seems to be what the Thai people are doing. But let's just go on a boat, let's observe, let's get closer, let's figure out what that is. Because from here, it just looks like a rock. But apparently, according to Google Maps, it's an underwater shrine. <laughs> so let's go have a look. Sweaty, sweaty. So, this is very interesting, very unique. <laughs> As temples go, you don't get more unique than this. So, it seems to be a rock. I thought it actually would have been some sort of man made structure, but that's not the case. <laughs> that would have been impossible for them to build this. I mean, look, this is the Mia Kong, right? This is a big old, wide, fast flowing whirlpool menacing monster of a river uh, but here this rock holds significance and everybody's coming up to bow give an offering some flowers some people are paying extra to wrap the rock in gold ribbons and gold material and it's just one other girl and me on this boat <laughs> But this boat's got like 25 people on it. And it's just nice. You know, it's just nice to experience these things when you're traveling. Doesn't matter what country or religion, if you're allowed, if they allow you to just quietly observe, then why not? Very fun.
Right, that is the end of Nong Kai, a sweaty, beautiful province in Isan. And the restaurant that you recommended, I'm sorry, the person who recommended on Instagram, I lost your message. And so I know I asked you what should I order, so I can't remember what you said, but I am going to order something. I'll show you here what I order, but I'm not going to vlog there. I just want to enjoy dinner and enjoy the atmosphere here by the Mir Kong, especially at sunset. Just got a cheeky little time lapse on the go here. You can see the GoPro. But the sun's just gone behind there and it looks gorgeous. So thank you so much for watching. I've really enjoyed Nong Kai. Just here for a day. Tomorrow we're off to the next one. And the Isan adventures continue on Next Level Adventures. And thanks for all the recommendations. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this slice of Isan and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.